So the first shoe on this list is one I'm betting that most of you are not familiar with. Now the shoe style has been around since Roman times, but it wasn't made popular till the 16th century in Europe. During that time period, it was worn as a bedroom slipper and it really didn't see much use outside of the home. However, at the same time in other parts of the world, it was worn by men and women as outerwear, in particular in Egypt, Turkey, and India. What shoe style am I talking about? Gents, I'm talking about the mule. Now a mule is defined as a style of shoe that has no back or constraint on the back of the heel. Now the name of the shoe comes from the Roman phrase mulus calcius, meaning mullet shoe. It specifically referred to these high level shoes worn by senators and high level officials that were oftentimes red or purple. Now in today's ranking, and to be specific, I'm talking about the woven mule slip on. You're going to see this made predominantly from leather. Occasionally you'll see canvas, you'll see other materials used, but this is a very simple. And I think if you find the right style, a very clean looking shoe that is easy to slip on and off, especially if you're going to be hanging out at the pool, if you're going to be going maybe to the beach, a shoe that looks good. You know, I wouldn't recommend wearing into a nice restaurant, but during the dog days of summer, this right here is going to keep your feet cool. Now, again, the key here is to find a pair made from a quality leather with a nice sleek silhouette. And I do think that if I were to have to tier rank this one, because it's so unique and I'm assuming that you found a really nice pair, I'm going to put this right up in stylish. The next shoe on this list, the Espadrille. Now, Espadrilles are defined as casual rope sold flat, but although sometimes you're going to see them with heels, they are usually made from a canvas or cotton fabric material on the upper, and they've got a very flexible sole made of Esparto rope. Now, the Esparto rope sole is the defining characteristics, but you will find some out there made from rubber. You know, at the end of the day, this is an inexpensive shoe that actually looks pretty darn good. Now, for you Europeans out there, you're very familiar with this. You also know that this is a shoe that you probably wear once a season. You buy it, they're relatively inexpensive, and it's going to wear down. These are not shoes that you're going to resole. These are shoes that you're going to wear to the beach. You're going to wear it when you're heading out to the water. These are shoes that are really throwaway, but again, you just pick them up and they're relatively inexpensive to manufacture. Now, espadrilles were made popular whenever John F. Kennedy started to wear them. We also saw Yves Saint Laurent, Salvador Dali, and Picasso wear them as well. Nowadays, you're going to find these manufactured all over the world. But if you can get the originals, if you can get some made over in Spain, again, with the sole that's using the Espardo rope, you definitely want to pick those up. So, where am I going to rank espadrilles? Oh, I almost want to put them in stylish, but they are really ultra casual. I'm going to put these in good to go. They're great shoes and some of you guys are going to disagree with me. Let me know down in the comments if you disagree with any of my rankings. Next up, we've got running shoes and these are made to go running in. The biggest offense that I see is a lot of guys default to the running shoe is their go-to summer shoe. They've got the shorts with the baseball cap, with the t-shirt, with the running shoes. If that is your uniform, actually take a step back and rethink, can I change this up? I mean, those first two shoes I talked about, so much more stylish, but still running shoes have a place. Now, where am I going to put running shoes on my chart? Well, if you're out running, then it would be good to go. But I know that a lot of you guys are wearing these as your daily wear. So, I'm going to put these down at the bottom, OMG. No, come on guys, upgrade. Next up, we've got the boat shoe, also known as the deck shoe. A lot of guys see this, they think, you know what? This looks like a stylish shoe. I'm going to wear it. But I feel the boat shoe has been overplayed, overworn, and they can look really clunky. Now, boat shoes do have a purpose. When you are on a boat, you look at the sole of a boat shoe, you've got that nice flat surface that is going to be able to grip. In fact, some boat shoes are going to have lines, basically grooves cut in there so that they can avoid the water and they can even give you better grip when you're on top of that boat. And in case you're wondering, the boat shoe was invented in 1935. You had a gentleman named Paul Sperry out of Connecticut. He came up with the idea, he patented, I mean, got everything set up, started the company, and his first shoe, which was a it was the Sperry Top Sider. Now, boat shoes were at their fashion peak in the 1980s and 1990s. And to this day, still a lot of guys cling on to them. And again, they're decent shoes. If you're going to be on a boat, you know, I would put these right here in good to go. But if you're not on a boat, if you're thinking that these are going to just be your day-to-day -day wear, I would put these down in maybe. They're definitely 
decent, but I think that there are some better options out there. That being said, again, you guys disagree with me, let me know below. Now, the next style of footwear has been with us for almost 10,000 years. Seriously, in Colorado, they found a pair in a cave, they carbon dated them, and these things were old school. Don't ask me about how they smelt, but uh, I will say that, uh, yes, the sandal has been around. And guys, sandals are defined, basically, they are open shoes. So, you've got the base sole made from various different materials. Now, ladies, we're going to see rubber. We're also going to see leather out there. And then they are using straps across the feet to hold them in place. And for all intents and purposes, I'm going to throw flip-flops in here as well. I know that they are slightly different, but, you know, they fit the definition. And when it comes down to it, these all have a purpose. I do think, especially the flip-flops, you're going to be in a public area with your feet exposed. You're going to take a shower. You're going to be able to take going to the pool. They definitely want to wear this because you don't want to pick up any bacteria. Other situations, again, you're heading to the beach. You just want something you can slip on and slip off. I think they're perfectly fine. And again, you're going to find this is a reoccurring theme throughout this video. If you wear these shoes in the right situation for what they're intended for, you're good to go. And men have been wearing shoes, sandals in particular, for thousands of years. So, you know that we've gone hiking in them, we've gone into combat wearing sandals. Now, there are some better options nowadays. I do think that whenever I wear sandals, I get rocks and I get things in there at the sole of the foot, so I'd rather have something that performs at a higher level. That being said, sandals, you know, in hot weather, I think that, yeah, there's nothing wrong with wearing them. Make sure you get a great pair. You know, Birkenstock really brought them back, made them popular in the 1970s, 80s, 90s. To this day, they're still, you know, one of the leaders in the industry, but there's tons of options. If you want something with high performance, maybe look at Teva. I've got a couple pairs and uh, really, it just comes down to wearing them in the right situation. So, assuming you are wearing them in the right situation, I'm going to put sandals actually in good to go. Yeah. Now, if you're wearing them in the wrong situation, of course, they would go lower. Next up, let's talk about the moccasin. And this is going to come in a wide variety of different variations. Right here, I got a pair of driving moccasins, but you'll also see and hear the word Weijuns. And there's slight variations, although there's a lot of overlap. In general, when we're talking about moccasins, we're talking about a shoe that is constructed without a sole. And the upper right here, as you can see, is going to be laced together. So, we've got this part right here that is the upper, and then you've got the leather going around the sides. Predominantly, these are going to be made from a variation of different animal leathers out there. The first moccasins, if you're familiar with, you know, Native Americans, these were made oftentimes from deer, other soft leathers, uh, and they often, they didn't have soles. They did have some leather on the bottom, then they would have maybe wood as well to be able to prevent the leather from wearing through. Nowadays, on, you know, a pair of driving moccasins, you'll actually see just rubber right here, but they're still very susceptible, as you can see with my pair right here, that I've worn out a little bit of the edge, so I stopped wearing them around as footwear. Now, Weijuns, we saw those actually come in with a sole, a proper sole, but they still had the upper area constructed in the classic moccasin design. And the key with the moccasin versus a lot of other shoes is we're going to see that the silhouette, basically the curvature around the toe and the toe box itself is going to be more roomy. So, if you want something, you're looking at a different type of, you know, loafers out there. If it is of a moccasin design, it may be something you want to go with because it's probably just going to be a bit more comfortable. That being said, they are in general more casual. So, on my tier list, where am I going to put moccasins? It came so close to being up there in the dapper dog, but guys, I'm just going to put them right here in stylish. So, what's going to go up here at the top? How about Crocs? No, just kidding. I'm not going to put Crocs up there, but I do think that Crocs, slides, a lot of these modern shoe styles that we see coming out, they actually do serve a purpose. I own a pair of Crocs. And when do I wear them? First thing in the morning during the summer, if I got to go check on the chickens, I got to feed, take the dog for a walk just around, and I'm going to be going through the wet grass. I don't want to get my leather shoes all damaged. So, that's where a synthetic material, an easy slip on and off. I don't have to worry about them. Uh, if you're going to be in water, interestingly enough, they float, although they could float away if you're in a river. Point being, in the right situation, they can work. So, with that being said, I'm going to slide them right in here at maybe. Next up on the list, we've got the classic canvas sneaker. You guys have seen this. You've seen the low top. You've got high tops as well. Made popular by Converse, a number of other companies, Adidas over in Europe for the last hundred years. They actually actually have, you know, they've been around even longer than that. There were variations made from different materials, but I'm talking about canvas. This was made popular in the 1950s, 1960s, relatively inexpensive, a bit breathable, it can also be washed and is relatively inexpensive to manufacture. That was key. And for so many kids, for so many young people growing up, these are the shoes to go to. And one of the huge advantages of sneakers is just simply good 
grip. Relatively a simple design that stays on the foot. Now, where am I going to rate these? Well, I'm not going to say they're stylish, but I am going to say they are good to go. And the reason I didn't say they were stylish is that there is another type of sneaker, the leather sneaker. Whether you want to go with white, whether you want to go with suede, go a little bit of color in it. Guys, I do think that these are stylish. They can do pretty much anything the sneaker does, but they just do it looking better. Now, the downside, they are going to usually be more expensive, but I do have to put these right here in stylish. I think on a guy that just wants to keep his shoes casual, but wants to look good. Yeah. Sneakers, leather. Yeah. We'll put them right there in stylish. Now, what about the classic loafer? Where does this fit in? So, I think I talk about this so many times on my channel, but yet I don't see enough men wearing this out there in the wild. These are just classic design. They're incredibly comfortable and really depending on the height of the vamp, which you can find styles out there that that's going to be cut a bit shorter. It's going to give you more breathing. You wear these with no-show socks. I think these are some of the most underrated summer shoes out there. And what I love about them is that there are so many different options when it comes to styles. Right here, notice all of a sudden we've got more of a chisel toe with that split toe design. So, it's a small change up going with a little bit of pebbled uh, type of leather, darker leather. And for the conservative guy that really, you know, doesn't want to change things too much on his shoes, this is just a really nice shoe that you could wear to church, you can wear it to the office and it's going to look good. And for the guy that's a little bit more adventurous, yeah, you still go with a classic leather. It's going to hold up, but notice the color blue. Now, you may be wondering, what am I going to match this with? Guys, a variety. You can wear this with almost anything you wear black or brown shoes with. Now, it's not going to be as formal. It's going to be a little bit more casual, but that split toe here, just a little bit of style and uh, overall very lightweight leather. Again, feel the leathers. There are different weights of leather. This is going to be very pliable, very simple, very clean, just a good looking shoe. And don't even get me started on materials. Again, so many options right here, just that nice gray suede. So, for that reason, gents, I've got to put loafers up here, dapper dog. And of course, let's not forget the monk strap. In this case, the double monk strap with the two tones. Yeah, very stylish. I put this in the dapper dog, but what about you? Where would you place these guys? You know, I appreciate your opinion. All right, Jen, so what video to watch next? How about the real reason on why women are obsessed with men's shoes? Seriously, why do they like them so much? I break it down here. I explain in detail the science, the data, the information behind it. If that's interesting to you guys, click on this video right here and discover the truth. It's out there, seriously. That's a good video. Check it out. It's a good one. See you guys.